Let's talk about processing data in pop-ups. And what I mean is we have a repeating group. We want to create a new row in that group, a new row in the database. We also want to update that row, or we want to delete the row. The best way to do that is using a pop-up. Let me demonstrate. So I have a repeating group, and this is of type team. Okay, in the data, I have teams. Those teams have a name, they have a list of users, and they have a creation date. And here I am displaying the teams in the editor just by simply searching for a team and sorting by the name. And this is the, the result of that search. What about creating a new team, assigning a user to that team, then editing an existing team as well as deleting a team? Let's have a look. So what I've done is created a group on the right-hand side, which is set to current cells team. And then I've dropped an icon in that group. The reason why I've done that is because the mouse won't change if you hover over an icon, but it will change if you hover over a group, providing that group has an attached workflow. Okay, so let's have a look at the pop-up. This will be called pop-up team. And the content type is team. Within that, I have another team group set to parent groups team. The reason why we don't have a data source is because we'll be displaying or pushing data into that particular pop-up corresponding with the row that we want to edit or update. So I'm going to grab an input, which will be the team name. That is content type of text. And this input should not be empty. I'm going to check. We don't want to create something without a name. So that's just a bit of safety. I'm just going to guide the user by adding a title here. Let's say create team. Put that to the left. Put this to the left as well. Now we need a drop down. And what we're trying to achieve here is just displaying all of the users in this dropdown, which will then give us the ability to select a user to add to this newly created team. So the source will be just do a search for all users and current options full name is what we display in those results. And this should also not be empty select a user. I'm just going to make this a bit bolder. Let's try that. Let me match my brand here quickly. Okay, let's carry on with this. Now let's save this newly created team. We will say save, and we'll also have a button, I'm going to copy and paste, just to close the pop-up. Um, let's say no color there, black text, and we won't assign any visual conditionals when we hover. Not sure, okay, there you go. I'm just going to neaten this up slightly. Center horizontally here. Okay. So we have our pop-up team, no data source. We have the group, which is set to the parent groups team. So when we do display data to the pop-up, we need to also push that data into this group. Let's work on the workflows here. So let's, when we create a team, what we'll do is save. And by that, we mean create a new thing. 
a new thing is a new row in the database, okay? Let me demonstrate. Team, by creating a thing, we're creating a new row in the database just like we would in Microsoft Excel. So we create a new thing that is a team. Team has a name which is set to that input. Input team name's value, okay? And then now we're dealing with a list. So we don't say user equals dropdown. We say add it. Because user equal equals implies there is only one piece of text or one person or one thing, but it's a list. So we're adding to the list or we're removing from the list. So I'm going to add the drop downs user that I selected, add the value of that. And then good housekeeping is just reset those inputs and simply hide the pop up. Okay, and while we add it, let's not forget that we might just want to close the pop up after opening it. So element actions, hide the pop up. Okay, now that's all very well, but how do we actually open this pop up to begin with? How do we create a new team? So what we need to do is add a button to the page that just opens that pop up. In fact, why don't we use an icon? I'm going to use a material icon, which is a free plugin by Bubble. Feel free to use any icon library you like, but I prefer this one. I'm going to add a plus button. I'm just going to make sure that it is perfect circle. Maybe make that a bit smaller. Just set that to the right. Okay, good stuff. Now this needs to be in a group to make the mouse change. And we're going to run the workflow on the group, not on the icon, but the user won't know the difference. I'm just doing this just so the mouse changes from a pointer to a hand because it doesn't do that on icons for some reason. And all we want to do is say element actions and show the pop-up. Later on, when we come to editing a team record, we will be showing a pop-up, but that will be step two. Step one would be display data. Which team do you want to edit? Send that data to the pop-up. In this example, we don't need to update a team. We're going to create a new team. Okay, so just that does bother me, the fact that that was floating in no man's land. So I'm going to set a max width. And now that icon should sit neatly to the top right, there it is. Okay, let's create a team. Team name will be finance. And user will be a new person I created called Natasha Phillips. And we can go ahead and save. And here we have our new row sorted alphabetically. There's Natasha assigned. Let's have a look at the database. I refresh the data. There's finance and there's Natasha Phillips. Okay, fantastic. What if we want to amend the data? How do we display data into that pop-up, change something about it? So now that we can see this data, it's in the database, now we can click on edit and then send this particular row to the pop-up to then update. So let's have a look at the workflow on this group holding this icon. In the cell, we're going to display current cells team to the pop-up. If that pop-up element type data source was a user, we would have a problem. We have to make sure that the pop-up has type team assigned. You can only push the same type into the pop-up. So step one is display the data. Step two is to show the pop-up. So let's try this. What if we want to change the name of finance to something else? So if I click this, nothing there. Right, so we have work to do. 
Let's go back to the pop-up. And we have set our parent groups team. We have a team, we're displaying the data. The data is funneling through, but we need an initial content. So what content exists in the database? Put that in that field. So that would be parent groups team's name. And on the drop down, it asks for the default value. And the default value is a parent groups names teams uses. Now this is a list. We can only display one thing in this drop down. Okay. So I'm, I'm going to say get the first item from that list and then display the current options full name. So that will be Natasha. So at this stage, why don't we do this? Why don't we change the save button to um, an update button? Uh, so that's really neat. So the user knows that they are displaying something. This could have said create to create the team. In fact, let's do that. So by default, it's create and that lines up with create team. But now we are updating. So how do we change the name? Well, what we need to say is that when the parent groups team, which is this group here, when the parent groups team is not empty. Is not empty means there is something there. There's something there because we display data into the pop-up. So there is something there. So therefore we can say, just change the text to update. Now the other problem is that we have creates team. So what we need to actually do is also change this. So I'm going to say same thing. When the parent groups team is not empty because there is data in that group, then change the text to update team. Now I know what you're thinking is that if we click on this workflow, even though the text has changed, we're still creating a team. And this is where we need to use conditionals to split this workflow, one button, two workflows. You don't create a new button, show and hide that button. We want a minimal amount of elements on the page when we are designing. And the way to do it is to create a conditional. And the conditional is an only when set on the button click. So we create a team only when the parent groups team is empty. We create a team only when there is no data in the pop-up. There is no data in the pop-up when we first click on that plus icon. Then create a team. Now I'm just going to simply right click, copy, paste, and say the opposite. When it is not empty, there is data, then don't create, rather replace step one with a new one and simply say data, make changes. Make changes to what? The parent group's team. We know the data is fed through nicely into that group. And now we can say name is the input team's name's value. And what do we do here? Now this is a slightly tricky one. Now we're dealing with a list of users in a team. Now in the database, Natasha is already a user assigned to this team. So if we want to change the user, what we would do is say set list and then add the user. And what set list does is clears the list and adds a new user. We could also say remove user, remove the drop down results user. But in this instance, I'm actually going to add a new user to this team. So I'm going to add the value of that. We're going to add a second, we're going to add a second user to this team. Plus we're going to change the name. Then we'll reset the inputs and hide the team. Okay, let's have a look at this. So if I had to create a new team, we have nothing here. This says create team and this button says create. If I now 
click on this icon here. Now it says update the team, which is finance and Natasha Phillips with update. So why don't we call this sales? Natasha Phillips is already a member. Let's add Kevin Collard. Now we can see we've got sales with two users. What about deleting a team? So what we could do is just change this to delete. And maybe for closing a pop-up in the top right-hand corner, we have an icon for closing the pop-up. Now what I'm gonna do, stick with me here, I'm gonna put this button in another group. This group won't be visible on page load and it is going to collapse when hidden. Because we're using the same pop-up to create, update and delete. So we need to use a few conditionals to find the right combination of UI that we're looking for. So when we create a team, we don't want to see the delete button. We only want to see the delete button when we, when we are editing a team, when we have data in the pop-up. That's when we display the delete because that makes sense. You can update the team by updating the inputs or by deleting the team. So then we'll show the delete button. So what we'll say on the conditionals on group, which I'm renaming to delete, is that when parent group's team is not empty because there is data, then it is visible, that group. And within the group, we have this button. Okay, and that button can stay visible because it's in a group that's hidden anyway. And then we can apply the workflow on this group. Step one, this is a very simple one, delete thing. And that is parent group's team. Deleting a thing means delete a row in the database. So we'll be deleting the sales row. But to demonstrate the functionality of this group, the show and hide group, let me show you what I mean. So if we want to create a new team, we don't see that button, it's collapsed and it's actually removed the vertical height here as well, which is really nifty. And usually we'll have then a closed pop-up up there or a person can also just close the pop-up by clicking in the dark space. Now, if we click on sales, we're displaying data into the pop-up and we're using our conditionals to look at whether or not we have data or not. Don't have data, or well, then we're probably creating a new team. We do have data, or well, then we're probably updating or deleting that team. And there is the delete button. And now simply once to delete, it's going to delete that whole row in the database and we won't see it in the repeating group. Here we go. Sales is gone. And just to confirm in the database, if I refresh, sales is gone. And now I can go ahead and create another sales team if I wish.